Hey guys, Ryan here for Bender Wins. Hope everyone's doing well today. Here with your daily free picks. All right, guys. So we went two and one the hard way yesterday. Um, what a sweat that game was. I mean, it uh, it wasn't really enjoyable. I mean, it, it wasn't an enjoyable game to watch. I did watch it start to finish. I forced myself. There's times I want to turn it off, but I'm like, no, no. You have to. You have to watch this. Um, and it was painful to watch. Okay, Baltimore shorthanded after I put out the pick got even more shorthanded um I'm going to talk about that as well because a, a really interesting lesson that we can we can learn from this and it's uh I think you guys are gonna like it so uh but still watching this game the referees were atrocious I mean I can't be the only one that was like yelling at my tv yesterday like maron stronzo que cazzo fai only in English but yesterday guys the refs sucked okay like really really bad and we won so it's like you know normally when you lose you're like oh the refs did i'm telling you guys that was atrocious that delay a game i mean the good on pittsburgh good on them just you know lay on them end it you know we, we should have had some points there um one of the early drives in the in the start of the third quarter a phantom hold on a drive on a on a um, uh, a run up the middle, you got the first down, a phantom hold. I, I watched that numerous times, and I mean, that is a Mickey Mouse ticky-tack hold call. And then um, to top it off, uh, Pittsburgh driving at the end, and uh, they marked the ball short. They marked the ball short, um, and they still gave him the first down. They like, pulled the marker out, put it down. I post on Instagram, it's clear as day. You can see the gap there, and they're like, I know, first down. You know what, though, to be honest, at that point, I was just happy to have the game be over and, you know, Baltimore run out the clock and whatever, okay? In all honesty, as bad as the call was, I was actually thinking, you know what? The last thing I would want here is for Baltimore to get this ball back and throw a pick six or fumble for a scoop and a score. So I was just happy to see this, like, horrible, horrible game end, okay? But I do want to talk about a couple things. So yesterday, guys... Um, I had Dobbins and Ingram playing in the game. Okay, that was my assumption. They they were deemed active, um, and then after the fact, ruled out. So I mean, short of me paying someone to sit on the tarmac and actually watch which players get on the plane and which ones don't, um, I'm at a bit of a loss sometimes with this whole new COVID thing that's going on. But something very very interesting happened. Okay, that money line guys went from plus three eighty five up to plus 440. Okay, so a big jump in the money line. Obviously, you know, we don't love that. Okay, we don't love that. But, and here's the big but. Here was the really interesting part of it. The line on the game itself didn't move. Okay, 10 and a half. And the juice changed a little bit. Okay, I think we had the game 10 and a half, minus 125. You get the 10 and a half for minus 115 to minus 110 by kickoff so that line didn't move despite despite a ton of money coming in on Pittsburgh especially after Dobbin and Ingram removed so I'm sitting there miniature panic mode thinking okay you know we got a lot on this game we we have them to score over 13 and a half we got the money line you know is this time to is it time to issue another video saying okay guys like let's let's bail out a little bit but I'm watching this this money come in and I'm not seeing that line move and I love that I don't love seeing, you know, the, the money line shoot up like that. But look at that, 385 all the way up to 440 with no line move, no line move on the side. So that was really interesting to me. And that, that told me a lot. That told me that Vegas was more than happy to allow that money to come in. And uh, it honestly made me feel at ease until I started watching Baltimore play football. And then I didn't feel at ease anymore. But um, I still really like the play. Uh, in all honesty, guys, look, you can make what you want of that game. You can. You can make what you want of the game. At the end of the day, um, at plus 385, we had good value on that money line. Now, it didn't come in. Um, and that, you know, there, there was some untimely turnovers. We got, we got some on our side for sure. But uh, that could have been a win. If we go in, if, we, if he makes that, that catch at the end of the first half, or the refs do their bloody job and actually call the delay a game like they should have and we have at least three points or crack, we go in at halftime with the lead, it could be a whole different ball game in the second half. 
Also, also, what does it do? And we got a we have a dog leading at halftime. It gives us a chance to, you know, bet the other side, take home a profit right then and there. Didn't happen, but anyways, guys. Bottom line, we still got the win in ugly fashion. And uh, if the NFL doesn't do something about the refereeing, um, I don't know. I really don't because this is the worst. This is the worst year I've ever seen. And we're having a good year. We're having a good year in NFL. Um, but the refing is atrocious. And it, I think I think the, the bad refing has helped us more than it's hurt us this year. But still, it's just bad. And I feel, you know, I, I feel for, you know, I feel for people on Pittsburgh. They were on the wrong side. Um, you know, even with all the help from the referees, they still couldn't cover. Uh, anyway, so... Uh, without further ado, guys, here, here's the game plan for today. Um, I have two plays for you guys. I have a two-unit play in the Louisiana-North Texas game. Um, I have a play in uh, the – sorry, we're talking college football here. Uh, normally on Thursday, I'd be talking NFL football, but we're not. Uh, I have a play in the Air Force-Utah State game, and then I have like a little bit of a game breakdown there that – um, I'm not really taking a side. I just want to give you guys that information. Uh, in terms of masterclass, four additional plays. I have one more play in college football, and I have three plays in uh, college basketball, including a two-unit play uh, with my super system. So you guys remember the super system from last year. Um, so that's going to be today, guys. So I'm going to jump right into it here. The first game is... Louisiana Tech and North Texas, okay? Louisiana Tech, North Texas. It's going to be a two-unit play here, guys. Uh, North Texas right now, 32% um, of bets, and they're only getting 94% of the money. Yeah, 94% of the money. That, you can expect, will even out. Um, I, I, I suspect for a couple of reasons. I'll get into that in a second. But I'm watching this, I'm watching this money come in. Um, and I'm looking at, you know, when it's coming in and it's coming in in chunks. It's coming in in like big giant bets. Okay. And that makes sense because there's 10 steam and reverse line moves all on North Texas in this game. 10, 10 different steam and reverse line moves. Now, some of the value has been zapped out of this game a little bit. You could have got North Texas earlier on plus three. Okay. They're down to minus one and a half now. But to me, guys... It's still a great play. It is still a great play. Um, I did manage to get a little bit on them, not a plus three. I missed that boat, but I did manage to get a little bit on them as a small dog. Um, I'm still going to be betting more. I'm going to take another money line bet. Um, I have a nice system as well on this. Nice system on this one. It has to do with steam and reverse line moves. Um, comes in at 63.1%. So our two unit play on this one, guys, is going to be North Texas money line minus 117. Okay, North Texas money line minus 117 for two units. Um, yeah, so that's that. All right, guys. So on to the next football game, Air Force and Utah State. Okay, Air Force, Utah State. Um, just a really quick breakdown of the game itself, guys. Uh, there's steam on both sides. Okay, there's steam on both sides. 57% um, of bets are on Air Force and 95% of the money. So early-ish early on, you know, it's still night before the game, the, the public, a lot of public, you know, day of their betting, a lot of public money is not factored in. So, I mean, it's a nice looking money distribution for Air Force and Air Force has moved to minus 11 and a half. But to me, guys, this Air Force bet, and I know this might sound crazy to some of you guys, what are you talking? the Air Force bet almost seems just too obvious. It seems just too obvious. And I mean, again, you know what? Air Force could get this done. But I've seen this many, many times before where it's just like, it's an obvious play, you know, even minus 11 and a half and all this money is going on Air Force and the line's not moving all that much. I mean, we're talking a point, point and a half in football, not a huge line move considering 95% of the money coming in. Okay. Um, I'm not touching this one, guys. I'm not touching it. And the only reason I bring it up is because, you know, I want you to know the majority of money and it's a, probably a, a decent amount is... Um, you know, sharp money that has come in on Air Force. Uh, I just don't like, you know, the, the absenteeism of Vegas in this line, okay? Because you would expect with this much money coming in, let's get that game to 13, 13 and a half. Like, you know, 
we're not seeing that. And that, that worries me about that game. So I'm not touching the, the side in this game. Um, you know, Air Force on paper looks great, but Utah scares me. It, it does this, this whole, the Utah state thing. I don't think they have a great team. They've kind of proven that already, but, um, yeah, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. Um, but at the end of the day, guys, I'm gonna go with experience on this one and, and lay off that game. Okay. Um, he, here's the play we do have in that game. Okay. So the under in that game, guys, um, right now, 41% of bets, 73% of money, 41% of bets, 73% of money. Um, uh, what did I write here? Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, as well. <laughs> this is, this is interesting. So early on guys, you're, you're, I'm watch, I'm looking at this, this money distribution coming in. And again, I'm seeing similar patterns where, you know, you're, you're seeing, um, basically some public money come in and you know the the money is the, the kind of staying small like just almost a straight line just like ticking up just a little bit and the, the bets are going up and up and up and then all of a sudden you just see you know the bets stay the same and the money like goes like way up because and that that's how you kind of indicate like the sharp money and stuff like that guys as well okay right now it's 41 percent 41 percent of bets 73 percent of money i don't i expect that to be honest uh, to, to come like back. I expect it to come back. I don't think you're going to see 73% of the money on the under in this game by kickoff. I still think there's some public money out there that's going to come in on the over in this game, but I don't think it's really going to move the line. But here's how I want you guys to play this. Okay. And now th this is unique. I don't, I don't often, I don't often do this, but, um, and I'm not going to try and get too complicated, but we're going to talk about, you know, the value here and maximizing your value. And yes, I'm always looking to maximize my value. Okay, so here's the bet, guys, okay? You go under 52, under 52, minus 115, okay? Under 52, minus 115. Line is at 51 and a half right now. I like that 52, under 52, minus 115, up to a maximum of minus 118, okay? If you're at 119, then you would go back and you would take the 51 and a half at minus 110. Now there's one exception to this, okay? One exception to this is if you can bet reduced juice, then you take the 51 and a half at minus 105, okay? Because there's extra value at minus 105 for that half point versus the minus 115, if you guys follow, okay? So if you're betting a standard book, as, as most of you are, if you're betting a standard book, guys, you're gonna go under 52 minus 115, but if you have access to reduce juice, then you would take under 51 and a half at minus 105, okay? And it might not sound like a lot, guys, just a little bit difference in juice, but the volume of bets we make year in and year out, it makes a very big difference, okay? I mean, I, I really, I wish early on in my career I had better record keeping um, because I would, I would really love to know, you know, just how much it's it, it saved me or how much extra I've made um, by shopping these lines over the year. I, I, I couldn't even guess at it, but it's, it's an astronomical figure. It, it, it would have to be. So anyways, guys, um, that's it for today. So if you guys are interested in masterclass, like I said, I have four additional plays. I have another two in a play in masterclass with a college basketball super system. I have another college football play and then uh, two additional college basketball plays. So um, thank you guys very much. Uh, again, I enjoyed talking some football with a lot of you guys yesterday. I think, I think a lot of us were on the same page that, um, you know, I wasn't the only one seeing that game being refed, uh, fairly poorly. Um, I don't know. Chime in if you think I'm wrong. Say you're an idiot bender or whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. So thank you very much. I really appreciate it, guys. And as always, have a very lucky day.